and uh, particularly to leverage uh, WebGIS technologies uh, to facilitate the data sharing, uh, interoperability, and collaboration in reporting to the SDGs uh, at the local, national, regional, and, and global levels. So it's uh, really a pleasure to, to be with you and to, to, to have this opportunity to share with the uh, user conference 2020 in S3 uh, the, the progress that we have been doing uh, uh, so far and, 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 and the, the really uh, amazing uh, developments in, 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 in the countries. So a few, uh, a few um, housekeeping uh, announcements. Uh, we will have uh, uh, five panelists, each of them will have uh, 10 minutes to, to, to do their presentations. Um, participants uh, can submit uh, at any time through the Q&A uh, window your questions uh, to specific panelists or, to, or, or, or in general. Uh, my colleague uh, Daniel Echetier and myself will be monitoring the Q&As and uh, at the end of the presentations we will be uh, uh, turning them back to, to the panelists for a for, uh, 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 concluding discussion. So um, today we are joined by representatives of uh, Ireland, G Chile and Ghana, countries that are leading the way in the integration of statistical and geospatial information and, and, and uh, uh, setting up modern platforms that bring users uh, to the users uh, uh, from all different sectors of society information that they need to meet global challenges, including the, the uh, goals of the 2030 agenda, but also addressing emerging challenges like the COVID-19 response. So our panelists are uh, from the United Nations Statistics Division, uh, Greg Scott, who heads the Global Geospatial Information Management section and, and uh, where he leads the, the work of the Secretariat of the Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management, uh, UNGGIM. And he will be introducing the Integrated Geospatial Information Framework. Um, we will also have uh, a presentation by Francesca Perucci, Chief of the Development Data and Outreach Branch, where she oversees the work of the Statistics Division on the Sustainable Development Goals and uh, she will present the vision, objectives, and roadmap of the feder federated information system for the SDGs and how these efforts are now also addressing the demands for data in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are privileged, as I said, to be joined by an incredible group of panelists representing the experiences of member states in Europe, Latin America, and Africa. We will start with a presentation by Hawk Mangan, a business uh, and marketing manager at Ordnance Survey Ireland, who will be presenting how Ireland's National Mapping Agency collaborated to support the national response to the COVID-19 crisis. Next, we will have a presentation by Macarena Perez, who is the executive Se secretary of the Chilean National System for the Coordination of Territorial Information. And uh, she will pre be presenting the experiences in the country regarding the integration of statistical and geospatial information. And we will conclude with a presentation by Omar Seidu, Head of Demographic Statistics and SDG Coordinator at Ghana Statistical Service, uh, where he coordinates data for monitoring the sustainable development goals. He will be presenting on innovative approaches for the data flows in, in Ghana, how GSS is championing data innovation, multi-stakeholder approach to data production and utilization of the building of robust administrative data systems. He will be joined by Selassie Akaho, who is uh, responsible for the mapping and spatial analysis of the 2020 census operations, and will be providing a live demo of the work in Ghana related to the COVID-19 data hub. So without uh, further ado, I would uh, uh, like to uh, pass the floor to Greg, who would also uh, provide some, some uh, uh, broader context and, and, and then introduce the, um, will be introduced the integrated geospatial information framework. So over to you, Greg. Thank you, Lois. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome to our, our ESRI UC 2020 virtual webinar. Um, and I'm really glad to see so many folks are able to participate. Um, as Lewis mentioned, I'm just going to um, give a, a bit of an overview of 
the the work that where where the, the topics we're going to cover today and hopefully you can now see my screen um, but certainly in the context of of our our presenters that we have with us today um, is going to cover a, a number of elements uh, we will talk about data hubs SDG open SDG data hubs and I guess the and Jack spoke about this yesterday as he as he has in the past about how we we start to integrate more our information and sharing our data and our knowledge in that context we will also talk about what we eloquently call the FIS for SDGs the federated information system for the SDGs and as SDG data hubs how they are evolving in our national to global community and we will also touch on a really important component of that is then moving towards um, responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and in the context of not only data hubs but also dashboards and the importance of the availability of dashboards and so it's really about how we evolve this data ecosystem more into a system of systems approach um, and this is something that we've been talking about within within the UN Statistics Division as we've evolved the idea of data hubs and the federated information system for the SDGs over the last couple of years. And my panelist colleagues will talk about all of these in the next hour or so. So I won't dwell on that too much. What I would like to talk a little bit about is this ecosystem and how we evolve our data and our information to a more integrated system of systems approach. And so with the context that we've seen just recently, we've been as many, I know many of you in the world have been seen a number of webinars and virtual seminars in assisting countries to think how they respond to COVID-19. And we've been doing the same, particularly with some of the developing countries and developing regions. And what we've seen is that, um, and even in the media, that geospatial information is, as an enabling technology has been at the heart of these many numerous visualizations and information dashboards that have been established around the world. They um, obviously come from WHO and particularly Johns Hopkins University and many others around the world. But in essence, they're leveraging the same technology. They're leveraging the same architecture. And in fact, when we think about these dashboards, they are almost like plug and play. We can pick them up and use them. And there's now, as Jack showed yesterday, many hundreds, if not thousands of these dashboards that exist. But one of the things we've been thinking about also, not only in UNSD, but in in the global geospatial community is that given this context that we're in right now, what is the influence and the impact of this emerging geospatial data ecosystem? And how are we responding to this crisis? And in such a way where we could be more structured and strategic on how we do that, rather than being so reactive as we do with disasters and, and, and events, is that the context of COVID is that it's not a, a locality or a region or a country or a, an administrative area or a city that might be looking at an earthquake or a cyclone or a flood um, or a wildfire or a bushfire, but it's the world addressing one issue. Um, it's addressing a pandemic that is from local to global. And so we've been able to see different perspectives of that. And so I'd want to spend a little bit of time now just talking through a bit of work that UNGGIM has been um, building over the last couple of years is the Integrated Geospatial Information Framework. And particular, uh, particularly it's nine strategic pathways and how these pathways and what we term as a, a more modern version of an SDI can provide some of the components that are required to respond to COVID-19 including leadership and governance and data and technology requirements. So I will not go into this integrated geospatial information framework in detail. I'm not going to do that. Time doesn't permit that. There's a web link there for all of you to see on our website. 
um, all of the documentation and process on the IGIF as it's evolving at the moment. So I will not go into that into detail. But suffice to say, it is built into three parts and the overarching framework is very high level and it's very much looking at how we can strengthen geospatial information across and within countries and how we can cultivate change and leadership and take steps to build capacity and capability across countries. The framework itself is very much that. It is a strategic framework. It has a vision, it has mission, it has drivers, principles, goals, and pathways. And I will focus on the pathways a little bit, but in essence, this really goes from, I guess, the idea that at the, at the very top, you have a vision of where you want to be. The mission is the enabling means for you to get there. And then countries have drivers that are global, such as the SDGs, down to very local in terms of national agendas, national priorities, e-government, e-commerce, transformation programs, etc. Importantly, the seven principles provide us with the compass on how we implement the framework. And the eight goals really provide us a future state of where countries wish to be in building capacity and capability um, and decision-making into the future. So that's just a quick overview of the, of the strategic objectives here. Now, I'll just spend a few more minutes here, and this is primarily the rest of my very short presentation, is on these strategic pathways. In essence, this is the glue, if I can call it that, that holds the IGIF together. And these nine strategic pathways that have now been tested in more than 133 countries around the world and just going through the conclusion of a global consultation at the moment are elements of what countries would need to do to actually create change. Um, and they're, they're, they're aligned in three um, different segments, if I can call it that, or areas of influence or pillars. One being governance, the second technology, and the third people. Um, kind of obvious, I guess, when you look at it. But importantly, the three governance uh, pillars um, are, are incredibly important to in, ensure that we have institution arrangements, et cetera, in place, and we have the right frameworks on policy and legal issues and financial obligations and capabilities. The bottom three are very much around the people side, how we develop partnerships from local to international, build capacity, education, how we communicate and engage beyond our own communities. And the technology stream there is, is what we are very familiar with in our community, just data, um, the standards that help in, enable data, but importantly, innovation and entrepreneurship and thinking about creativity and change and the types of technologies that are available now is really, really important. And this is why innovation sits at the heart of those nine strategic pathways. So what does this mean in terms of COVID? What we are seeing now and is becoming, I guess, a little bit more prevalent is that even though we have applied this framework in terms of national arrangements and priorities, that they can also be applied to COVID-19. So for example, in the webinars that we've been, been providing over the last two months or so, um, and by way of example, they've occurred in the in the, uh, the, the Americas region, the Latin America, Africa, Asia Pacific, and, and certainly capturing the needs of developing countries. Very quickly, if we just think about COVID and we think about governance, governance in the time of crisis is really important. We need to understand what the leadership is, what the institutional arrangements are, and also the roles and responsibilities. When we think about legal and policy, this is really important in covering the issues with data privacy, with use, with contact tracing, the benefits, the positives, the negatives that come with that, and the implications around the use of data, particularly new data. And financial is very much about how we capture the funding requirements and investments that need to happen in terms of looking at new technology and capacity and trying to scale up very, very quickly. Data is at the core. Do people understand the data that's being used? 
What do we do about disaggregation, sharing data, dissemination? Um, what the data can tell us and what the data cannot tell us. And their new data needs as we think about COVID, you know, transport routes, infrastructure, mobility of people, schools, communications, health, all of this data that needs to fit into this ecosystem when we respond to COVID. And when I said earlier about innovation, this is really about how do we leverage innovation and technology to readily implement and apply solutions, not only locally, but also at scale. And certainly when we think about geospatial innovation as a core element of even most geospatial applications today being simple, discoverable, usable, extendable, etc. Standards ensure that data and systems are interoperable. They need to, solutions need to be delivered in a standardized and an interoperable way. It's the importance of standards. Partnerships and strategic alliances are critical in responding to such dynamic events. Um, it's at all levels, it's government, it's industry, it's the private sector, it's local governments, it's cities and mayors and councils. And so how we have partnerships in that, in that area is vitally important. As is capacity in education, helping stakeholders to develop their knowledge and skills in geostatistical analysis and modeling and other areas to build capacity and capability. And finally, communication and education and engagement. And this is really, um, I guess, a key focus of today when we see what the results are. It's about growing awareness and understanding. We need to communicate limitations on data, the assumptions on models and the analysis, how we communicate the right messages and do it in a way that's, that's effective. And certainly when we look at the billions of hits that have come through the um, Johns Hopkins um, dashboard, that's a real uh, valid example of such education, engagement and communication. I have one final slide. This is really what I guess the idea of the IGIF was. It was about how it fits into national strategies and the United Kingdom's geospatial strategy was just released no more than a couple of weeks ago and embedded into that strategy is the IGIF as a national framework. Importantly, that framework can be applied to all circumstances and all, in all situations. And I think that's an important element as we think going forward and as we listen to some of our presentations in the next few minutes is going to be vitally important. So with that, Lewis, I will conclude and, and, and happily hand over to my colleague Francesca and look forward to the conversations. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Francesca, please go ahead. Francesca? Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> A little slow this morning, sorry. And, and thank you and good morning, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, it's great to be here uh, at the UC conference. Uh, uh, PT, we cannot see each other in person, uh, but it's a great opportunity to have the, uh, the possibility to interact with the geospatial community. We, coming from the statistical community, we value this uh, tremendously uh, because we feel like this is central, uh, the collaboration between the two, the two communities is central to the work we do. And, and thanks, uh, Greg, for the wonderful framing of the discussion, uh, your presentation. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the Federating the Information Systems for the SDG is one important uh, initiative that we were able to undertake with uh, our partners, ESRI, uh, over the last couple of years and uh, has proved uh, quite successful in linking and, and, and making uh, the, the use of geospatial information, uh, making the best use of geospatial information uh, for implementing uh, the 2030 agenda. So I'd like to start from um, uh, reminding ourselves what we're dealing with, uh, the unprecedented uh, amount of, of data that is required uh, for the implementation of the agenda and for the review of progress. So, 
what we uh, really uh, faced over the over the uh, process uh, is the bringing the national uh, reporting uh, sort of to the top of, of what we do and, and to the center of what we do. And while national statistical offices and national statistical systems are able to report to the international, the global statistical system, to, for, the, for that to be able to compile uh, global indicators, we were looking for a way for countries to be able to really share their own national platforms, their own national reporting directly with the global community. And so we're looking really to keep uh, the focus on, on what uh, countries are doing with their own national uh, reporting and local reporting and subnational mechanisms. So our common vision uh, in, in working with our partners at ESRI, uh, we realized there was a way to bring that uh, in an efficient way to bring those national platforms up to the global level uh, directly without sort of going through the global statistical system. So the vision was of a, a global network of national SDG hubs that would be linked to what we have at the UN, which is an SDG global uh, hub. And that was done through the integration of statistics and geospatial information uh, that come from different, uh, the, from different sources across systems. So each country has uh, they, each country they have their own uh, system of, of multiple data sources and the, the system allows us for a, med, a better uh, uh, to bring data in an open and accessible way and, and so that we can use them to the full, fullest uh, extent possible. It's based of course on uh, GIS and open standards and it supports national partnerships uh, uh, in every country around both the data and the policy initiatives. And it provides, uh, provides an, an enabling environment for all stakeholders. And we've seen that the SDGs, the implementation of SDGs is really about bringing all stakeholders together. And the difficulties when it comes to data is being able to link up those different data sets coming from different sources and from different uh, communities. So the challenge is really to build a global network where you can bring together the national uh, SDG data hubs that really creates a value uh, for all the uh, participating countries. And it provides the tools and services also that help um, uh, all the producers and consumers of the data to interact. And finally, to design and maintain a technological infrastructure that, is, uh, that can be also uh, scaled up uh, rapidly. And as I was saying in the beginning, you know, central to the implementation of this system is really for the national statistical systems to come together with the geospatial community and work in, in a collaborative manner. So what we've seen, the experience of countries that have been successful in doing, the, in doing so, that's really where you see this uh, process taking place in the more effective uh, way. So the challenge we're dealing with is really that uh, there is not one single uh, data set or one single database where you can find data for SDGs. SDGs, I was saying, as I was saying earlier, they require an unprecedented amount of data, but also they require data coming from multiple sources. Uh, indicators uh, are very different. They come from administrative data sources, they are qualitative, data, uh, qualitative information, uh, information on implementation of policies and regulations, there's a wide var variety of data sets. So uh, these databases tend to proliferate within each of the sectors and across different um, organizations and of course every country uh, they have their own system. Um, several countries and, and agencies and international agencies have developed their platforms uh, for SDGs both for data collection and reporting. And, and in general, since the beginning, since 2015, these have uh, really been uh, developed independently. So there was really a need for bringing all these pieces together in an efficient way. And, and, and as I said, you know, really making sure that what is done at the national level is consumed at the global level without going through too many steps, but uh, a space to provide access directly to the country 
uh, country data and, and country systems. So the, the difficulties is that all these data sets and the wealth of data that we see today, you know, they, they, are, they have different needs and capabilities and they serve different uh, constituencies, different uh, target audiences. They follow these different protocols, technologies and standards. And, and there is a, overall a fragmented data production and, and dissemination system. So what we've seen and, uh, over the last few years, and this is an area that has evolved really very rapidly, uh, the development of, of policies and tools for data interoperability to really create a culture of open data where data, or data sets are interoperable and the different communities can work together to really make the best use of, of the available data and the available tools. And we've seen this happening even within the, the formal intergovernmental process where uh, the, the UN Statistical Commission, where the statistical uh, offices come together, the chief statisticians around the world come together. At that level, also the open data uh, practices and, and, and new tools for the interoperability of different data sets have become very prominent and there's, there's been a, a, a process for the development of guidelines and, and, and policy recommendations in that area. So a lot is going on and, and the field is evolving very rapidly. Sorry. So this is where we have been able uh, to develop uh, in, um, in partnership with uh, with ESRI, we have a UN SDG data hub that uh, Greg was alluding at earlier, where we bring together uh, country uh, data hubs, our own products. Uh, you see in the smaller uh, screenshots, you see what we can um, uh, offer in the, in the UN SDG data hub in terms of products uh, to pull together uh, the the data that we have available in the global SDG indicator database and the smaller uh, screenshot at the, the bottom of the slide is the cover of our annual report which is uh, informed by the global SDG indicators. Those are the indicators compiled at the global level through the international statistical system, the international agencies. But this also brings together national data hubs and that's the important element here that you can access directly uh, data hubs that are prepared and, and um, developed uh, by uh, national and uh, statistical and geospatial systems. So these are the countries that have already uh, started to set up their own SDG data hub and you have quite a long list. And, uh, and on the right side of the slide, you see some examples of what their own national platforms look like. And, and there's been tremendous progress in this area with countries uh, being able to produce uh, more increasingly uh, so more sophisticated and, and, and very uh, useful and rich uh, data platforms uh, that are geospatial, uh, geospatially enabled. And, and of course, this needs to be scaled up. And, and as Greg was saying, you know, the demand for data has never been uh, as, as, as urgent and high as now with the the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of data. There is a tremendous appetite and, and national statistical systems have really stepped up in, in, in addressing the increased demand with new tools and new initiatives. And we see that around the world, uh, in, in all regions of the world. And, and we see this as an, a, you know, an opportunity, as sad as it is that uh, it took a pandemic to show how important data are for policy making um, but uh, we we would like to really uh, build on this momentum and and expand this and make this available to the largest number of countries as possible and in the context uh, of, of, of the, the what we offer um, to countries who want to join this initiative and, and share their national hub. This diagram shows you a little bit what we as the UN Statistics Division together with ESRI offer to countries, ESRI offering you know, free licenses and technical support. And we offer, we offer also technical uh, uh, backstopping and, and the training, initial training to set up the, the platforms. And you can follow all the steps uh, I won't go into all the, the details for lack of time, but it starts, of course, with assessing their own needs and data sources, goal by goal on the SDGs, and building up the whole system, configuring the organization, the structure, the portal, 
and, and then working on the data to condition the statistical data and, and build up the, the, the data sets and the system and integrate with the, the, the statistical side and the geospatial side and up to the publish, publication of the national hub and then sharing the national hub with the, with the global uh, federated system for the SDGs. And, and uh, talking about the response to COVID-19, uh, given the high demand uh, for countries, you know, to be able to respond to the urgent uh, new data needs uh, from government, uh, especially, you know, who had to quickly respond with the mitigation uh, uh, interventions and measures to contain and, and address all the impacts of the, of the crisis. Uh, we offered with ESRI that again very generously offered uh, tools and, and a, a whole package to countries to build their own uh, uh, data hub on COVID-19. So what you see here is the global. What we offer is a, a website, a page uh, with different tools uh, that, that countries can access when they decide to uh, set up their own uh, data hub and 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 uh, and you you also have direct access to some of the national data hubs on COVID-19, um, which is increasingly uh, needed in countries. So uh, you have access to uh, software and tools. You have uh, use of GIS technologies uh, where you can share available data resources and web services in an open and inter interoperable environment. And then you have ready to use templates that help national statistical office who want to set up their own um, open data sites. This is an example of, of what you see on, uh, on uh, the page. You have also access to the global uh, data uh, linked to the John Hopkins uh, uh, University database. And I would like to stop here and uh, looking forward to hearing the experience from the different countries and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Francesca. And uh, may I now uh, uh, give the floor to, to Hope from Ireland uh, to, to share his presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you can see my presentation. So um, this is this is a story of how Ordnance Survey in Ireland was involved in a collaborative effort uh, to respond to the COVID emergency. Um, in 2019, GeoHive, which was an OSI initiative, uh, was identified as the state's geospatial data hub in the public sector data strategy. Um, GeoHive is effectively a spatial data infrastructure made up of people, processes, including budget and technology, um, underpinned by ESRI technology. And OSI's corporate strategy from 2019 to 2021 uses the United Nations Integrated Geospatial Information Framework and its and the nine strategic pathways that Greg was talking about as a mechanism to define and describe its operations. And GeoHive is a very important element of that. Um, OSI found that the focus, that the IGIF focus on governance, technology, and people actually really described our organization and helped us put together a, a strategy that was reflective of the industry we work in and the challenges we have as a business. Um, in Ireland, the Department of Communications, Climate Action and Environment has respons overall responsibility for reporting on Ireland's progress towards meeting our national SDG targets. And GeoHive was launched as Ireland's official sustainable development goal data hub at the European Forum for Geography and Statistics in 2017, uh, underpinned by a geostatistical collaboration between Ordnance Survey Ireland and the Statistics Office in Ireland, the Central Statistics Office. And 
the UN SDG Data Hub is a place where interested parties can come and openly access uh, data, visualize that data, download it, and access APIs. Um, and that whole infrastructure is underpinned by a Northern Survey Ireland Central Statistics Office, an Esri Ireland data governance team, which meets and holds regular meetings in relation to the management of the data and the management of the data hub. And that was all in, in place uh, throughout uh, 2017, 2018, and 2019. And then COVID hit earlier this year. And a decision was made in Ordnance Survey Ireland and the CSO to ask the SDG group to create a COVID infrastructure. And the group expanded to include Aero, which is an All-Ireland Research Institute based out of one of our universities, and our Department of Housing Planning and Local Government. Um, Aero were responsible for data handling and spatial analytics, and our Department of Housing Planning and Local Government were a key actor in the local authority space, where a lot of the frontline interventions were actually managed at a country level. So the purpose of that GeoHive COVID group was to coordinate the technical data and policy um, and financial activities related to uh, providing key data and tools back to the state so that data could help inform Ireland's response to the COVID outbreak. outbreak. And I guess the vision was, well, we all believed um, that accurate and timely data, statistical and geography, data had a part to play in our, in our response. The terms of reference for the group was, well, we had this mantra wall, um, that we collect once and use many times. Um, so we spent a lot of time making sure to find uh, data and make that data available. Uh, we connected organizations through memorandums of understanding. Um, we used uh, fairly robust data governance processes to give people comfort that the data was going to be managed in, in proper ways. Um, and of course, we used statistical data governance procedures were key. So it was a fairly fast paced environment. So that whole concept of data stewardship and data guidance was, uh, was critical uh, to try and maximize the use of, of the data. So the group itself, what, what, it is, what has it established? So it's established a response platform that has public-private um, collaboration on it and public-private users on it um, with secure virtual data hubs. Um, it has uh, managed a geostatistical data governance subgroup and forum that is still meeting on a weekly basis um, and managing all of the, the data and the governance of that data. And then it is, of course, set up a, a technical infrastructure based on Esri technology to actually deliver out the apps. The graphic at the end of this slide very briefly shows you what the data ecosystem looked like. So on the left-hand side, you had all of the various health data sources. They were coming into the central statistics office and their data center and between the CSO and the national pandemic modeling team, they were providing feeds into the GeoHive COVID data hub, and that data hub was producing apps, dashboards, reports, and analysis. And I'll just take you through um, a look at some, some of those, actually, dashboards. So you may recognize this. It was, it, it's um, examples of it have been seen the world over, but this was our public, this was our first publicly available health surveillance monitor. It was updated daily um, and had significant number of users, users on it. That external, that was a publicly available dashboard. Um, that external dashboard was supported by an internal only dashboard for the National Public Health Emergency Team and the Chief Medical Officer Team. And again, this was updated daily. It had significant uh, more sensitive data on this um, and had over 80 national team members accessing the, the service on a day-to-day on a, on a -day basis. 
our first public dashboard um, eventually gave way to uh, a new data hub, which is being updated on uh, updated daily, peaked at over 15,000 hits per day, but an average of 10,000 hits uh, per day. I have a few screenshots of that if they'll, they'll come up. <coughs> So that's a look at the at the data hub there. Now, interestingly, for the first time, uh, the public got a look at this uh, data hub. They got a look at the cumulative cases to date across Ireland by an electrical division area. Uh, so figures are based on uh, 3,400 electoral divisions. And the underlying data that fed that came from the Health Protection Surveillance Centre. They operate a computerized infectious disease reporting database. And the data in that was geocoded by the health intelligence unit in our health service executive. And then that fed into the that fed into the mapping, which is now, now publicly available. Some of the other initiatives we were able to stand up. Um, the, as I mentioned, the department with responsibility for local authorities was a key member of the group. And they stood up a community call initiative, which engaged with voluntary sector um, to provide services out to vulnerable uh, members of the community or members of the community who were, who were cocooning. So they used voluntary um, and charity organizations across the country to take calls and provide services out to members of the, of the community. That was hugely successful. Um, we also set up a pavement with a public transport and a retail locations app, um, whereby we were showing the average width of pavements um, uh, in order that town and city planners might have a better uh, understanding of how they might plan social distancing measures across their uh, responsible areas. And then for the Irish police force, we set up a, um, a traffic monitoring and mobility dashboard that effectively were showing traffic flows um, throughout the day that the police force used uh, for monitoring and for planning where their, where their checkpoints were. One of the other projects we ended up getting involved in was uh, for our Department of Taoiseach, which is our Prime Minister's office. As Ireland began to uh, reopen, um, they looked for information on retail businesses um, they wanted to know where they were, what type of businesses they were, what size of retail units they were, how many workers worked in those locations and what type of shopping areas were they. And through combination with the Valuation Office and the Central Statistics Office and Gamma, um, who provide information on retail units in Ireland, we were able to, to do up a map-based dashboard and report for the Prime Minister's Office which fed into the uh, reopening of, of Ireland discussion. Um, and then I guess the sort of the, the key takeaways um, and the lessons I think that we've taken from the last number of months is that um, GeoHive, which um, uh, had been the, the state's geospatial data hub, um, is now a data collaboration platform. That collaboration is happening across the public sector and the private sector, and happening across a much wider group of organizations than it would have done uh, previously. And that echoes something Francesca was saying, that it, it took a pandemic to get the type of momentum that, that uh, we all knew was capable uh, driving through these uh, platforms. Um, but what is obvious is that geospatial data and apps have played a key role in revealing insights and patterns, and they've helped in terms of Ireland's data response. Um, I think without very robust and established geospatial and statistical data governance processes, a lot of this would have been an awful lot harder to achieve. So government was the key. Um, the fact that it was already operating through the SDG group was crucial. And the fact that we had that robust governance in place opened many doors for us. Um, we were able to respond rapidly 
in terms of the things that were asked of us because we had an existing platform in place. Um, and I think overall that resulted in a real understanding of the value that geospatial data and infrastructure plays in, in assisting um, you know, that greater sharing, collaboration and, and analysis. Um, and I think that's the end of the presentation. Thank you, thank you for this uh, very, very uh, interesting presentation, and, and, and uh, in particular that last slide, which is uh, tremendously important for the discussion. Uh, we are collecting questions uh, again. Please, uh, to everybody in the audience, feel free to send your questions through the Q and A. Uh, we are running a little bit uh, uh, short of time, so I will just uh, pass it over to to Macarena. Welcome, Macarena, and and uh, we will be collecting questions for a discussion at the very end. Uh, the floor is you, Macarena. Thank you so much. Okay, hello. Hello, everyone. Can you listen to me well? Yeah? Loud and clear. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Eh, buenos días a todos los presentes. Good morning to everyone eh, from Santiago in Chile. Um, I'm going to only use the time that Greg told me is eight minutes i think i have so i'm going to be very short and, and try to be very uh, quick and in very quickly in the ideas that that we have uh, i'm going to share my screen it's supposed to work okay it is okay it's called yes we see your screen now okay so uh, as Greg said, uh, a little bit of presentation. I'm in charge of the national system of uh, coordination of territorial information in my country. Um, what today it, it, it will be like an SDI. Uh, we are trying uh, for a lot of years to have uh, that uh, that meaning, and and I think that today. Uh, uh, because all this emergency, we are in a very good place to, to position the name of SDI and the importance to have data, to have uh, information, and to work in a coordinated way. Uh, way. So we are Macarena, very yeah? can, I, can I interrupt you just a little bit? We are seeing your, your presenter's screen and not the, the slide view. Maybe the simplest would be to, to stay uh, out of the presenter's view and uh, just show the, the PowerPoint. Um, that would be a, a, a quick compromise. Well, in the in the interest of time, I would suggest we just go go ahead with this. We can see your screen, though, in a bit a smaller uh, uh, size. Okay, let me try something. Just a little bit. And there? No, we still see the, the small screen. But go ahead. I would say just go ahead, and, and we will we will uh, look at the at the uh, presenters view. Sorry, I don't know how to change that. Maybe there? It is okay? Perfect, perfect. Okay. So, 
Um, uh, in a very short way, uh, I'm going to explain how we work here. I'm in charge uh, of the national system, or uh, it's a coordination system created uh, about 10 years ago right now. And, uh, and we have uh, 12 ministers that are part of this council. Uh, my minister uh, is in charge of the council of ministers and I'm the executive secretary of this council. So we work in a lot uh, of different uh, areas. At this moment, we have uh, 10 uh, groups, uh, working groups related with uh, cadastral uh, transport and, and, different, uh, uh, and different areas related with the cartography. Um, uh, they are looking to uh, standard, uh, the standardization and management the information in, in a way that is using uh, con that consider all the standard uh, in, glo in the global area and of course the lines are, are um, related with the IDIF. So uh, one of these working groups is related in particular with disaster and how we respond to uh, different situations that my country has to deal <laughs> like every year. In the past uh, two years, we've been having uh, disaster like uh, poisoning, of course, wildfire in the south of Chile, some flooding in the north area and in the Andes. So we've been working with this uh, with this group uh, of, pro of professionals from every uh, every minister for almost three or four years. We have a protocol that is a very important thing and uh, in the final uh, comments I will mention that that because it's one of the keys uh, of the actual work that we're doing right now. We have uh, this protocol, we have updated information uh, that, that every professional of every Every minister can can use to uh, to to some specific uh, works, and we have a multi-sectorial team of experts. So that is very important. Uh, this year we start working in the emergency of COVID-19 uh, on March uh, 19. Um, I think when we when the protocol is on uh, because uh, the Minister of Health, of National Health, uh, he demand to active this working group. We never, we never realize all the, the good work that we are going to make. Uh, the past three or four months almost, it's been very, very crazy, I, I must say, but uh, we have the opportunity to show all the work that we've been doing for the past 10 years. I, um, uh, I only have this work for three years. So for me, it's, it's been a great experience to show that if today we can show all the results in this way, uh, it's because uh, we've been building all this coordination system and all this relation. Uh, first, we, um, we, with the activation of this working group, uh, we start to make some uh, map viewers, but they are close. Uh, they are only for, uh, for the authorities because, of course, the information, we must protect that. And we create a first version of the dashboard that uh, I'm showing right now. It's a very simple dashboard with a lot of information but it we try to make it very uh, easy to understand for every citizen so if someone wants to know how many active cases or how many how many exams we're doing uh, uh, you can understand without understanding a map so we try to to make it in a very easy way uh, 
to create this dashboard, we work with journalists, designer, uh, of course, my team, uh, and, uh, and we made it public. Uh, last week, I have uh, the opportunity right now to show the new version of the dashboard that we, that we start showing on April 22. Uh, last Friday, my, my minister and the Minister of Health in, in national TV, they uh, released the new version of the dashboard, uh, that is the one that I'm showing. I'm going to show you, I hope it works, it's supposed to. <laughs> so uh, the information that we present in this dashboard, uh, we have to update every day. We are using the official, uh, the official data from the Minister of Health. So we're working with that data. We have to process, of course, and uh, show the results in this kind of way. In this dashboard, in the first view, you can see the old country, the active cases. Uh, you can select different regions. And uh, show you how many active cases is in your zone. Uh, a big upgrade that we made in this version is related with the scale of information. So, for example, we start to work with some information that it wasn't public until last week. Uh, that is it's very important because all, all the local uh, authorities are using that information that right now that is related with the cases. In this area, for example, this is a country in the south of Chile, uh, a capital country of this uh, region. Uh, you can see all the uh, areas that are actually in quarantine. As you know, at this moment, uh, a lot of my country is under quarantine. You can see the active cases in the past uh, 14, 14 days, and you can select the information. At this scale. So this is very important because every local authority at this moment are seeing this information. This is provided by the Minister of Health every day. Uh, for us, it's been a really big challenge to show at this scale uh, this kind of information and still protect the data and, and, and understand that the, to release this kind of information is not to scare people, it's to understand better how is it working and how is it going. Uh, yesterday I was talking with someone, uh, a professional from the Minister of Health, and they told us we have to learn to live with this because probably this information is going to stay here for a very long, long time. So uh, I think this is very important. As citizens, we are going to have a uh, we, we have to, uh, to live with, with this kind of information, how to deal with this information. So um, um, finally, I just want to say some very important things related first uh, with, uh, with some topics that Greg told us about the IDIF. Uh, I think uh, some, some points are very important for us the governance uh, is one of the key. Uh, all this information, it couldn't be public at this moment if we, um, we don't have all the protocols that we already have. We've been working in that kind of protocol for years. So uh, at this moment, we have all the coordination with different ministers. So we've been building uh, these, uh, these protocols uh, to act at this moment. And second of all, I want to, to say uh, all the communication 
uh, pathway. Uh, that is one of the keys. So we are uh, very technical in what the kind of things that we do, but we do need uh, all the, the, the help from some communicator, how, how they show this information to the community and to the authorities. So that is one of the, the, the keys of the information. Today, they have, at this moment, 900,000 visits to our dashboard, so that is very successful for us. A lot of responsibility, but we are very thankful for the opportunity to show this work, to show the importance of the geospatial information to make decisions. Um, I want to thank ESRI for all the support uh, to make this platform. They are able every day and every morning, Sunday, uh, Wednesday, every day at night, we, we have a lot of questions and they, they are here to help us. So uh, I, that it's all because they are sending me, I, I should stop. <laughs> Thank you very much to all. I hope you stay safe. Thank you very much, Macarena. It's really, really amazing to see the dashboard. And uh, I'll pass the floor now to, to Omar in uh, uh, Ghana Statistical Service and, and his team, uh, who will be showing the perspective and the experience uh, from Ghana. Uh, over to you. Thank, thank you very much, Louis. And uh, on behalf of Omar and then our government statistician, my name is Victor and we are pleased to be part of this program. And I want to share my screen so that I go straight to our presentation. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, very well. Thank you, uh, Victor, go ahead. Thank you very much. So the screen you are seeing is what Ghana Statistical Service and as part of the National Statistical System try to develop to as a way of measuring our SDG indicators. So with as part of my presentation, I'll take you through the data flow in Ghana. Then uh, we'll zoom, I'll give the opportunity to my colleague Selassie, who will then take us through the, uh, uh, in, uh, the dashboard for COVID-19. So for Ghana, we talk about data. It's all about three major sources that we talked about. That's the survey, censuses, and then administrative. So for Ghana, we have administrative system where we normally run and it's decentralized, where we run from the ministry. Victor, department. Uh, are, are you intending to share your uh, PowerPoint presentation? Because we are seeing your browser. Can you see my, can you see my slides? No, not yet. We see your browser with Ghana indicators. Sorry. Can you see? Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Thank you very much. So, as I said, Ghana ran through other sources of data where we talked about service census administrative. So, for the administrative data, here we are talking about the ministry, department, and agencies where Ghana Statistical Service has the right collaborative uh, partner with them where we normally have a data flow anytime we put in a request. And for us to facilitate our data collection, there has been an SDG team forming all the relevant ministry, department, and agencies that we have identified as part of our SDG activities. We map up all the 232 indicators and to ensure that the relevant institutions that are responsible for data to measure those indicators have been done. And we identify key institutions that we work with, which can cascade to the district level. And also other government institutions, which are not in the main line stream of a government activity. 
We also have this number of institutions that we work with from health, energy, finance, employment, birth and death registry, and environment, and also tourism. And remember, most of the indicators are around education, health, gender, tourism as well. And a, a measure of one indicator helps us to also get data for other indicators. Having its ripple effect to ensure that one particular activity from an institution will help us to ensure that we get the right data from the other institution as well. Because looking at the way the indicators are, you might get the numerator from a, a particular institution where the denominator also is from another institution. So there's a need for us to have a strong collaborative team so that people will find it easy to move around to get data, not by physical movement, but also with the platform that we have shared, people can share their data so the other institution can also work. We have Ministry of Finance as well here. So the data, as I said, every institution have the ministry, department agencies, has its research and statistical information management directorate, and they are responsible for collating and compiling all those administrative data. When it comes to survey access sources, it's the sole mandatory of Ghana Statistical Service to lead any survey in the country. So Ministry of Education can conduct a survey, but they have to do that in, co in collaboration with Ghana Statistical Service. But for administrative data, each ministry, department, agency does its own exercise. Also, they have this policy planning, monitoring and evaluation directorate, where they also support the work of the research and statistical information management directorate. And by so doing, they have a strong team that builds a strong administrative data system in their various office. So each of these directorates compile those, their official data as part of the services they render to the public. And then we go in for the data that results as of their exercise. So this is a structure of the whole national statistical system that Ghana Statistical Service try to lead. So we have the ministry department and agency with eight branches where they also supply data to other data users, where GSS also form part of it. So as part of us to report on the SDG indicators and ensure that we don't leave no one behind, we leave no one behind, there's a need for us to disaggregate the data. But at the end of the day, some of the data that come from the ministries is not in the right disaggregated form in terms of age, sex, education, then the regional district, and also the national level. So there's a need for us to take them through to ensure that all the data they collect is in the right form of disaggregation so that we can measure those SDG indicators that we want to share with the public. So as part of gathering this best practice that UN Statistics Division has uh, set or established, there's a need for us to ensure that as, as a national statistical system body, we organize a series of meetings with these MDAs to help them compile quality data. And how did we do that? There's a need for us to, we set up a standard template for them to do that. And that template also went in with a, a metadata template. And this metadata template is well designed to help them to get the right data for us to measure the various indicators. Thank you very much. So at this point, I'll leave the platform for my colleague, Selassie, out of this exercise that we have done, how we have managed to put them onto the dashboard for the data users to also appreciate what we have done so far. So Selassie, can you please share your screen? They take us to the dashboard. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, basically, what we have here is uh, the Ghana National Dashboard, which we use the data collected over the period to develop this. So for the start, uh, we have our features that support uh, data uh, dashboard, which is generally uh, 
the COVID-19 cases and the regional distribution of certain parameters such as uh, their age groups and then their lifestyle patterns of people. So th that's basically the features and then the layers that were created using the data collected from various agencies. And in addition to that, we went on to develop a dashboard that has various components that links up this data into a visual format that allows people to appreciate whatever is in the tables that the data, in which the data was collected. So uh, basically, a dashboard has a story map component that looks at the distribution of certain parameters. So one of them is the uh, number of people in a one room house. And then for instance, uh, for the dashboard, we made it interactive now that we could have pop-up that could give you indicators of the regional aggregates calculated into the dashboard or uh, onto the map. And in addition to that, also we created a hub that allows us to display information in the format of a website. So, for instance, in our dashboard, we have it as a news out there that gives you the various videos that was out to the public on various days as we recorded the virus. And the next part of it was making it dynamic enough to go to be able to visualize it on any device they want to. So, first of all, we had the dashboard that we created primarily for desktop and then also uh, Using the experience builder, we were able also to integrate it into a format that allows you to uh, visualize it on your mobile phone. Then on the side, we also created a app that provides general information to users on the on all the cases across the country and then the various daily, daily trends that are ongoing. So just to give you an overview of the dashboard. So basically, this is the dashboard we have here. Uh, we have various parameters such as our, our main map here, which gives you a time series of the cases. So we were able to plot the cases on which day they happened, and then uh, at a regional level where they happen at, and then we created a time series. So you can see where exactly the first cases started from. Uh, let me just pull this back a bit. And then you can see the progression of the cases as time went on. Then also we had a regional aggregate of the cases as they occurred. So uh, with this just gives you a special overview of where exactly we are having high cases, uh, what are the patterns over there. Then in the vulnerability information, we add various parameters such as um, the general population, then we look at the population density, which are all interactive. So all you need to do is click on a particular district within the map, and then you get the aggregate of each parameter for that district. So this is the population uh, density. Then we look at the number of people who are 60 years older, then the number of people in uh, one room housing, then it uh, goes on and on and on. And as the finally, we also look at the number of healthcare facilities we have distributed across the country. So this I guess remember this that we used to build a story map. Then as I mentioned earlier on, there was a half part of it, which you can scroll through to get information on that's uh, information that was out there to the general public that we mind and added it to our dashboard. So uh, anyone who comes here will have that one interface where they get all the information concerning the coronavirus in Ghana. Then we had our national cases to add there. Uh, and these are actually live linked to the Ghana Health Service. So as soon as uh, they update their data, the dashboard is updated, so there's no lag in it. But then we go in daily to review whatever is happening over there. Uh, I think that was all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Salasi. So, Luis, as part of our data collection, Ghana has deployed this technology way of collecting data where we use tablets. We used to use the PAPI system, now we are going to copy. And as and when the data is collected, the GPS. Uh, location codes are also picked, and that's what helps us to also get the facility locations. That's what has also helped us to put them on the 
of a 90 dashboard. So every facility in the country is bare schools, uh, water, small system, water uh, supply system, uh, health facilities, uh, polling station centers for electoral commission to also use. All these co uh, coordinates have been picked and it's helping us to ensure that we map various districts, regions to the national level when it comes to data collection. So technology is really playing a key role in our data collection and is facilitating the share of data across the national statistical system. So with ESRI support and with the National Data Portal Hub, Ghana will be proud to join the 17 countries that uh, have been displayed and we will be proud by next week. We hope that Ghana will be part of the countries that have joined this global uh, geospatial portal hub. Thank you very much, Louis. Thank you, uh, Victor. And in uh, in uh, due of time, I, I'm going to quickly pick up uh, the questions I was monitoring uh, through the chat. Um, I will start with the set with the last question actually, which would uh, be a good segue for all the countries. There was a question about uh, how privacy is being, being managed, especially for uh, uh, the one pro showed by Chile. If you can shed light on that. But that's, this is true for Ghana and uh, Ireland too. So you can uh, take the, the mic and explain how privacy is uh, handled in this uh, measure. So there were some uh, very detailed letters uh, in case of Chile and I'm sure in, in case of Ireland too, how, how is this being managed? Please go ahead uh, to your... Uh, Sorry, uh, Lewis, it's uh, Hugh here from Ireland. Um, sorry, can you, can you repeat the, the question in relation to how data was being managed? Uh, in, in relation to uh, privacy, to individual privacy on, on the data set. Oh, ah, yes, clear? okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I explained how um, in Ireland we have a, we have a, a postcode that uh, uniquely identifies um, every every building. The health service executive, that's a, that's our uh, um, you know our department of health. When they are testing members of the public, they will record that information, and um, so they will accurately record somebody's address. But in terms of the information that we were publishing, we never saw that detailed information. That detailed information stayed at source and we only ever saw aggregated information. So information that had been aggregated upwards um, to, to our, the geographies that I spoke about, which were the electoral districts. So from a privacy perspective, none of the none of the data that was shared risked people's privacy although accurate data was captured it was captured at source where it was needed between the the patient and their healthcare provider but that that accurate data wasn't shared anywhere beyond that so does does that answer the question thank you very much yes uh, macarena yeah. if you have uh, an intervention maybe 30 seconds or, or so Yes, maybe or, or, uh, Victor uh, I'm from Ghana side. So thank you very much. So my our situation is also like what my colleague uh, Logan also said. We don't publish individual data to the public. So anytime we want to publish data, it's always in a, the aggregated form. And even if someone comes to find out the individual, we don't do in the name of like Victor Lewis, no. It's always in aggregate form, and always we anonymize our data that are sent out to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. I'll, I'll go past to the other questions, uh, which I am directed to Francesca. Uh, the questions are uh, related to the support that ISRI is uh, providing uh, for setting up SDG data hubs, 
uh, what what the, the options right now available. Uh, and also we have another related question from Bangladesh, uh, who are our project countries on UNSD DFID, who are also asking what are the possibilities of implementing this in Bangladesh or in project countries at large. If you can uh, briefly put this down, uh, Francesca, that would be uh, good. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, yes, uh, certainly, I, I'm happy to address that as uh, uh, we, of course, uh, welcome very much the, 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 the wish from countries to participate in the federated system, and that's very much on a voluntary basis. Uh, countries who want to become part of the initiative are welcome to do so, and ESRI has established a whole system to support countries. Uh, the developing countries will get uh, the free licenses to join, so, and we provide uh, the technical uh, support in, in collaboration with ESRI both from the geospatial side and the statistical side and we can follow up bilaterally with those who are interested uh, we normally have a an initial conversation where we explore the way forward and set up the next steps so uh, welcome to get in touch with those who are interested uh, the question on the DFID project countries uh, uh, we normally uh, sort of try and, and and integrate all our activities uh, from the division and uh, since DFID is a, uh, the, the UNSD DFID project is a very important initiative also for us, uh, covering over 20 countries, we try to integrate it and, and where countries are interested, we have offered uh, the possibility of setting up the platform and joining the initiative. So certainly, yes, that's the, that's a, 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 the way to go, <laughs> to make the best use of also uh, all, all resources that are available and integrating those uh, those projects. Thank you, Francesca. Over to you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. So the last question is purely administrative, so I'll answer it. Uh, there was a question about uh, the availability of recording of this uh, webinar. Uh, we will do so. We'll uh, record the webinar. It's already recorded and uh, also presentations will be available. So we'll send out an email tomorrow on, on, on the details of uh, getting to the recording and the details of the presentation. Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, if you have additional questions, you can also send it by email, but uh, I'll pass it to uh, Luis uh, to finalize it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I, before concluding, I, I just uh, want to have a, uh, an opportunity to open the floor for any, any concluding remarks. Uh, from from Greg or or any of the other panelists, if you think you 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 would like to share any any final thought in a very briefly, because we are uh, running uh, way beyond time. Uh, and any any additional uh, uh, closing remarks? Uh, uh, I, I start with Greg. Thank you, Lewis. I just wanted to um, thank all of our presenters um, for, for participating and I guess providing really, really good evidence of the importance of, of statistical geospatial integration, the technologies that support that. So thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Francesca. Uh, thank you, Luis. And from my side, just a huge thank you to our country colleagues from the countries and, and Greg and all colleagues. Uh, this has been uh, really a very interesting discussion. And I look forward to getting in touch with countries who want to join our initiatives, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hug. From Ireland, do you, do you Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. No, no uh, I've, I've got no concluding remarks, but uh, just thank you for the opportunity and um, uh, I wish everyone well. Thank you so much. Uh, Macarena. Uh, just to thank the opportunity to show all the work that we're doing here and we're learning so much from other countries and, and stay safe. Uh, this is a, a really great community, so uh, if you have any question, I'm able to ask you whenever you need. Take Thank care. You, Thank you, Macarena. Uh, Victor, one final thought. Yeah, thank you very much. So with Ghana, we appreciate the platform Esri has given to us and our partners, both the private and then those other, other ministries that are helping us to also team up to get uh, quality and reliable data for national development. We thank you very much. And the private sector is
greatly playing a key role in data collection in Ghana and also other collaborative with other partners, development partners, for us to move on as the world is also moving to a great height. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much to all our panelists and for the, 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 uh, our colleagues from ESRI, of course, that are also here in the, in the webinar for the crucial support and, and partnership. And um, um, I just want to, to take, uh, um, my, my takeaway here is, is, is uh, governance, technology, and, and, uh, and uh, protocols for privacy are key. Uh, please uh, um, send to us any additional questions, expressions of interest. Uh, we are here to, to serve uh, member states and, and uh, uh, we are happy to, to, to work with you. Thank you so much. And with this, we conclude the, the webinar. Um, as Daniel said, we have uh, the recording and we'll be sharing with you uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.